Hey music lovers! Today we have something really special for you. We did our first interview with our lovely dead astronauts from the US. Their new album, Silhouettes, will be released 15th of January on CD, vinyl and in digital format. Now enjoy the interview, including some music videos, unheard tracks and some interesting facts about the band. Have fun! All right, so welcome, guys. Here they are. We welcome Florence and Jared of our wonderful Dead Astronauts. Welcome, guys. Hey. Say hello to your fans. <laughs> it's great to be here. Thank you. Yeah, thanks for having us. Yeah. Um, yeah, Dead Astronauts. You have um, an album uh, next week. It's out. Oh, sorry. It's tomorrow. It's out. <laughs> <laughs> it's a recorded session, so uh, no worries. Yeah, Silhouettes is about to be released next week. Um, yeah, it's been a while since your last release. Um, I think 2016. 
So um, yeah, if you like, tell us a bit what happened in the last years and where have you been all the time? Uh, that, that's a great question. Um, <laughs> so uh, original bandmate Haley, we actually, uh, we parted ways on, on, on really good terms and she kind of went off and doing, did her own project as, as Mega Mako. Um, and then I kind of took some time off, right? We, um, an album, especially when just two people working on it, it can be kind of straining at times and take a lot, a lot out of you. So I took a break actually from just music in general and focused on my, on my design career. Um, and then Slade, uh, who isn't, unfortunately isn't in this call, but is, is, is part of the band. Um, him and I were kind of talking about kicking things back up with Dead Astronauts. Um, I think it was maybe like two years after the actual release of, of Arms of Night, our, our last album. Uh, and then we started actually just to play around with with ideas and styles and really getting somebody on board, um, a female vocalist on board that really sort of complemented my style. Uh, and I think back then it was really important that we didn't just try to find somebody that sang like Haley. We wanted somebody that really had their own sort of style and wanted Haley's like portion to really live on its own and thrive on its own and be its own sort of thing. So um, I didn't want to try to try to steamroll that. And that was really important. So we'd actually gone through uh, a number of different uh, female vocalists to really get like a good vibe and a good feel tons of incredible talent um, but just nobody that was really a good fit for us and that actually took a lot of time to kind of find somebody that fit and then we reached out or I reached out to Florence and it was one of the only thing I'd heard from her up to that point was that see you in the trees song um, and I love that song and, and go to find out that yeah glit fighter was was the name she was using it was just kind of her um, and it was just like oh this this is perfect this feels like a great fit reached out to her um, I don't know what did you think when we first reached out to you Florence, what was your thoughts? <laughs> well, was really, I was really excited because I had obviously known you guys through the synthwave world, um, which I'm very connected to. Not necessarily my music, my per my solo stuff isn't necess necessarily synthwave, but um, but of course I had known you guys and I loved your your older stuff. So I was I was really honored and excited that you had reached out to me, and of of course you know I wanted to give it a shot because I thought you know it, it's you know, working, working on your own is awesome, but also working with other people is really rewarding as well. So I was like, oh, this is, this can be a really great outlet to, you know, join a band and actually work with people and kind of have people to bounce ideas off of rather than just me sitting alone in my room, just doing my own thing and not having anyone else's input. So, um, so yeah, no, I, I jumped at the chance to, to work with Dead Astronauts because I mean, they, they had a really awesome name from before and I was really excited. Yeah, awesome. Hey, your voices are a perfect match to us. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, you, that was definitely the goal, yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 it sounds, sounded awesome, uh, sounds awesome. Uh, so it's all good. Yeah, we've just, um, in this little pre-listening session of your new album, uh, we just uh, watched the video for your your latest video for Missing Person, um, and really awesome video. So Jared, you you did that video yourself. Uh, I, I read uh, on Facebook. Just uh, do you want to tell us a little bit about that? Yeah. So it's actually a, a footage that I got from um, I can't remember where they're located, but they're they're in in Eastern Europe there. Um, and it was uh, uh, this duo that basically did all the footage, um, and then I pieced it all together and, and and based on what they had pieced it all together and kind of created this sort of narrative with it um and it's funny because is missing person wasn't actually the first song that i i try to cut the footage to and really kind of build a narrative with uh, we tried a few different songs off the album but missing person really really fit the vibe really well really felt like this was the sort of song mm -hmm. kind of married up perfectly with it so yeah i edited edited the whole video um did some of the post-process color grading on it and that, and then and kind of uh, kind of built the narrative out of that. So it was actually first time for me too. I've never edited a, a full-length music video like that. So it was honestly a ton of fun. I look forward to doing it again. Um, uh, yeah, it was well received. So so um, awesome footage. So I really love the video yeah, and the song cool. anyway. Yeah. <laughs> well, well, you guys yeah. have to say that though, because we're on your label, so you have to say that. <laughs> <laughs> of course, but we we love everything on our label, so we definitely love it. Yeah. <laughs> it's just just uh, just the words. <laughs> so wonderful, awesome start. So I would say, let's see and watch the next song from Silhouettes. Uh, this is uh, "Forgetting Me," 
and uh, we show you the video uh, and afterwards we um, continue a little bit of talking. So enjoy the video. All right, forgetting me. Another awesome video of our dead astronauts. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so um, yeah, forgetting me was uh, actually the first single uh, you released out of the of the album, and um, actually also the uh, one of the songs. Um, yeah, we we knew then uh, when we just found you, or uh, when more or less Slade found us for you, <laughs> and uh, yeah. Um, uh, Slade Templeton, a well-known guy from Crime Vessel at Influx Studios in, in Switzerland. Um, how long? How, where? Who do you? Um, oh, how long do you know Slade? Oh, I, I was trying to think of this the other day, and Slade and I have actually <laughs> we've known each other for years. Um, back, back, I think when he did, I could be remembering this wrong. I think when he, um, when he was still doing Defunct back in the day, which was mm -hmm. like big big club tracks right when he was back back when he was djing um i think i'd met him through like one of his producer friends i actually did graphic design for him on on the side for for this other friend uh, i think back then the, the label was called like baptism records or something like that um and i think i think if i'm remembering this correctly it's been a while ago 
I met Slade through this client because we were actually looking for a new producer or, or at least somebody new to collaborate with um, uh, after I think actually this might even been before Constellations was released. So this was a number of years. So I think we've maybe known Slade for, I don't know, maybe seven years now, eight years. I, I can't remember exactly, to be honest, mm -hmm. my memory is terrible, but uh, so met him through that. He'd actually done um, uh, guitar on Constellations. He'd done guitar on on Arms of Night, and he actually did a lot of mastering for us as well. Uh, so we we Dead Astronauts wise, he'd actually been working with us well before Silhouettes was even started. Um, so he'd actually next to next to Haley and myself, he's actually kind of technically one of the longest standing band, band members. Funny enough, um, and then we worked on a few things here and there. Um, we did vocals, Haley and I did vocals on one of his songs, one of Crying Vessel songs. Um, uh, oh, cool. I think it was Floating <laughs> Dead Boy, I think was the, the title mm -hmm. of it. I can't remember exactly now. And we actually, funny enough, on, uh, I think it's on Constellations, we actually have a version of that song on that album called The Ocean mm -hmm. Owns Your Body as well. So we, we kind of had this history of collaborating together. And mm -hmm. Slade's a great guy. He really, I mean, you yeah. guys know him well. You guys have known him for yeah. a while, too. Really good guy to work yeah. with. Um, so when it came time for for silhouettes, <laughs> obviously it didn't have a title by that uh, at that point, but it was more like I approached him with with actually full on producing for us and in, in being part of the band, um, mm -hmm. and then kind of things just went from there. And like I said, it took time to kind of get things rolling, figure out on a worker working style. And the funny part is, is that throughout all of Dead Astronauts history, all of the bandmates and collaborations have been remote. So with the exception of any sort of live performance stuff, everything we've done production wise has been in two or three different locations, independent of each other. So even with Slade and, and in Florence, we'd yeah. send an idea back and forth, throw some vocals down or change some production up or do things here and there, or I'd send some production and then he'd build a song based on that, or Florence would send uh, lyrics or vocals and we'd have this sort of collaborative style. Uh, so it's actually really interesting that that Slade's part of that. And despite him being in Switzerland, none of that mattered, right? Because just the nature mm -hmm. of collaborating. So yeah, it's kind of interesting. So through that, obviously got to know Slade a lot better, a lot more hands-on with stuff, super talented. And then in turn, Florence as well, right? And the, the biggest thing for us was, I think, Florence, correct me if I'm wrong. I think the, the biggest thing we have is the, the silhouettes took about a year, but the actual amount of work in that time was actually probably a short period of time frame. The problem is our schedules. So between Slade working with 500 other bands, uh, Florence with her day job doing her stuff, and then my day job as well, it was scheduling wise, it was just chaos. So we'd finish like one song and then wouldn't talk for like three months and then finish another song in two weeks and then not talk for another month. So it was just this sort of back and forth that was, it, it made it really complicated. But I think towards maybe the middle um, or towards the end of the album, we actually got in a really good rhythm, a really good groove, kind of how we working together. But it's funny that it's it's not so much the work that took the most time. It was trying to figure out the best way to work together and identifying each other's working styles and things. That was actually the hardest part of it. It wasn't the yeah. music part. It was the trying to figure out how to work together effectively part. So yeah, it was really interesting. But again, Slade's great to work with in that realm. And of, of course, Florence's as well. Yeah. It turned out pretty well, yeah. I would say. I end. like to think so, but we'll find out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. Definitely turned out. So guys, tell us a little bit about your background. Uh, are you full-time musicians with the Dead Astronauts or are you also have um, stupid, boring day jobs like us? <laughs> Go ahead, Florence. All right. Um, well, I do have a I do have a day job. Um, I work in IT and AV of all things. Um, I do work at a music school, so I kind of keep the. I'm always surrounded by music. Um, I'm not a full time musician. That's the dream, but it doesn't you know sustain my life financially. So you know how it goes. Um, <laughs> But, uh, but I did, I studied music um, throughout school, um, throughout college. I studied classical voice actually. Um, and I realized I didn't love opera too much. So I started kind of going off in my own direction. Um, and uh, so I do, I have a solo, a solo project called Blitbiter. Um, and that's how Jared found me <laughs> for Dead Astronauts as well. So, um, so yeah, I mean, I music is kind of it's my life is split between my day job and music is, so you know it's I'm always surrounded by it and um, yeah, that's me. 
Great, Jared. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I'm actually a, a, a self-taught uh, graphic designer and illustrator. Um, so I'd actually done a freelance illustration graphic design for 15, 16 years, roughly. Uh, and then within the last uh, number of years, I've gotten into to actually footwear design, so I'm product design, but yeah, mainly technical running footwear. So that's my, my, my daytime job, basically my full-time job. That's what pays the bills. And then same as Florence, music is just sort of a side passion, right? And yeah, if, if it became a primary thing down the road, great. But I think for for right now, it's 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 another sort of creative outlet that that both Florence and I, and of course Slade too, just love. And I think out of the three of us, Slade is obviously the only one that music is actually his full time job, yeah. right? Um, so yeah, I think it's it's just kind of a side thing, and it's it's always something that we want to do. Like uh, I started Dead Astronauts back in 2011, um, just based on it, I'd always kind of been around music. Uh, my dad was kind of an audiophile. Uh, with vinyl back in the day. And I remember always listening to his, his records. Um, and then I actually took piano lessons for a few years when I was a kid as well. Um, and then DJed through, throughout parts of high school to sort of pay, pay, the, pay the bills. Um, so it always kind of been around it, but never really taken it super serious. Um, and mm-hmm. then around 2011 is what I really kind of wanted to, to sit down and really kind of figure out what to do. Uh, and got myself a, 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 digital, a digital audio uh, inter- workstation uh, back in the day, which was like FL Studio Free Loops way back in the day. And I remember playing around with it with friends in high school or something like that <laughs> and picked that up and just started to, started to produce stuff. And I think um, throughout the years kind of developed a style in that. And even on, on our albums, I, I'd produce stuff, but a lot of the times it would be as, as a sort of baseline to, to create vocals to. Or, or to build an idea or just to get something down quick. And then I would either shift it off to, to Haley at the time or, of course, Slade um, now. So there, you'll actually see on the album, there's, there's two songs that I produced on the album, two instrumental tracks, uh, and there's actually co-produced on, on a couple of songs as well. So getting a little more hands-on with the production thing, but I think I'm a lot more comfortable with the, the writing and vocal side for now, personally. And it's always, I always had the struggle of, what I produce is a little more uh, uh, orchestral, a little more sort of epic, and it's got these sort of uh, operatic stabs in it and all this sort of stuff. And then I go to sit down and do vocals to it. And I'm just like, I, I don't know. So I've <laughs> always really struggled with producing for my voice because I feel my voice needs a more sort of grounded, darker sort of feeling to it. But my production is always so full and there's so much to it that I really struggle that when I come to put the vocals to it, I'm like, I can't sing to this. I don't know what to do with this. So <laughs> just like Florence said, where you you sit down in a room and you sort of do your thing and there's always that sort of that third party or there's other people that bring so much more to the table, right? That can talk you out of bad ideas or, or, mm. or, or bring good ideas to the table or you can collaborate with or bounce ideas off of, or even in my case, actually be able to produce something that I can actually sing to um and so that's been a, that's kind of a big big struggle in it for sure um but that's what's great to have Slade there it's great to have Florence there to bounce ideas off of I think that that sort of collaboration is, is it's in, in, invaluable right and that's why when you can find good bad bandmates like Slade like Florence you want to hold on to them right um because yeah. that collaboration especially in music you could see like in the silhouettes album like there's there's essence of all three of us in that album and essence of of dead astronauts past with Haley as well so i think to me that's music wise that's one of the most rewarding things is just that collaborative effort is 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 great yeah that was a lot of talking i'm sorry <laughs> no problem <laughs> no problem <laughs> <laughs> it's all good it's all good it's uh, it's always great to you to um to hear people or to hear musicians talk about their music um, uh, when they and, and feel the passion they have for the for their music and their and and their lyrics and um, this is what we what what we can feel and and this is our feeling as well and and, and so uh, I will never I would never dare to stop you when you talk about your passion. <laughs> <laughs> so this is really awesome. Um, all right, uh, ready for the next song. Ready for the next song? Okay, we have uh, some more songs to present you before the album is released. And uh, the next song uh, I like uh, a lot. We played it already, I think, on some Twitch DJ sets or whatever. Just it's recently, I think, yeah. She Haunts Me. She Haunts Me. Also a, a great song, uh, and uh, which we'll hear now. And uh, enjoy now the song and uh, see you in a bit.
tried, I tried to move on. Another great song, She Haunts Me. Um, remember guys, the album will be released very, very shortly on CD and the wonderful vinyl uh, and light green, blue vinyl and crystal clear one. So something to look forward to. She Haunts Me, great song. So guys, we're still here. Um, I want to ask you um, a little bit about your style of music. Uh, we, you, we realized that um, compared to your older albums, you changed your style a little bit to this pure new retro wave stuff to a bit more darker sound. So um, tell us a little bit more about that. Uh, yeah, I mean, that's a great question. I, I think one of the one of the efforts to to kind of have this this era of of, of Haley and Jared and Dead Astronauts, and then sort of have this new era of, of Slade Florence and Jared and Dead Astronauts. Part of that was was actually changing up our sound as well. Um, so we went a little darker. Uh, we used a lot more sort of live instruments as well on on this album. Uh, Slade did. Um, the the big thing for us was was kind of finding that balance, right? Uh, Dead Astronauts is all about that sort of balance between the, the male vocals, the female vocals, and, and really the production and the styles. So really finding that balance where we didn't we didn't alienate previous fans of of, of Dead Astronauts, mm -hmm. um, but also sort of reach a new sort of uh, demographic, a new sort of group of people that maybe typically wouldn't have been introduced to our work. And I know we were we were heavy into to the synthwave scene. Uh, mainly just because of early collaborations with with uh, uh, with producers like Perturbator uh, and a number of others, we were sort of kind of cemented in that scene. But we really wanted to kind of expand out a bit as well. And I think through uh, through some of the experiences I'd had uh, uh, with different venues and different people in that, there was the sort of the whole sort of dark wave goth scene in that. And that was Slade was kind of used to this scene because that's Crying Vessel sort of was in that range. And there was something about it that that really appealed to me. There was something about that crowd that was very welcoming. Um, and not to say the synth wave crowd wasn't that way. It was just a very different vibe. Um, in, in, in where we're sort of taking things now with, with songs like Missing Persons and Strangers in a Room and that, you can tell, especially with Strangers in a Room, for example, which you guys will hear tomorrow. So this is probably completely out of context. Um, actually, no, that was... Um, that was one of the pre-release tracks. Anyway, I'm getting off. St Strangers in a Room. That was actually, um, I think if I'm not wrong, Florence, that was the first song we finished on the album, right? On Silhouettes. Yeah, I think yeah, that's so, the song that you guys sent to me, actually. Oh, that might have been it. So yeah, that might have been the first new song you heard from yeah, us. Yeah, okay. So yeah, so Strangers in a Room was actually the first song we finished. And that one, you can tell there's still, there's still that taste of old dead astronauts in that song. It's a little yeah, darker, but just the production, uh, the feel of it, and even the way I did the vocals, it's still very rooted in old dead astronauts. And you can tell that that actually, that song, Strangers in a Room, between that and then the final song we finished on the album was, was literally a year apart. So you can tell we went from like old dead astronauts and then slowly got into new dead astronauts mm -hmm. throughout, the, throughout yeah. the album. So it's kind of interesting how it played out that way. Um, and that was the sort of goal with it, right? Was to really show this sort of evolution between where we've been uh, there and then where we are now. But Florence, what do you think from being kind of a, an outsider before on, on the astronauts and kind of seeing what we did to being in it now and seeing where we are now? How would you describe the change or how would you, how would you describe it? Well, it was, I mean, just kind of coming into the middle of kind of when the sound was changing, it, it was very kind of organic to me almost. Um, and it, it's, it's also really great because I mean I've always been drawn to kind of the darker side of music. I love dark wave. I kind of I love the goth scene as well. Not my uh, solo stuff isn't necessarily super super dark, but um, but it was exciting that you guys wanted to go in this direction because I love this genre of music. And when and normally when I write on my own, I don't necessarily write this kind of music. But collaborating with you guys was a really, it was just a great experience because I could kind of, that was, it's like the more dark wave, darker music outlet for me, which is really cool. So it was a really exciting change. Um, so I'm not doing all the same genres. It's, yeah, so it's it's not, not only exciting, it's challenging too, just because it's different. Um, and I like that. So yeah, no, it, it was really awesome to go in this. Yeah. Yeah, I think I think you will um, 
your let's say your older fans will not be disappointed and you will definitely gain new fans with this album mm -hmm. and it's a i also think it's a great mixture between the the synth wave and a bit a, a bit a, a, and yeah with a darker touch so uh, i like this a lot it's uh, definitely an album to uh, to dance to or um, to just simply listen to and enjoy yeah. it so um i would say let's uh, hear another song let's hear another song and um, uh, which, which uh, I choose, Pain I Know. Another cool song I like a lot, <laughs> Pain I Know. And by the way, there is another, another great song, which is Thorns. Yeah. Thorns, Florence, yeah. I, my favorite song. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Jared, should, I'm sorry. You should probably play it. You should probably play <laughs> it, this session. I'm just saying. Yeah, yeah, like, maybe. Yeah, yeah, why not? Why not? Why not? We show you uh, later. We we play you. I think we play you Thorns, uh, a song which only Florence is singing, and I really, really love your voice. But at first, <laughs> let's listen. Pain I know. Enjoy. What are your plans on touring in the future when all this uh, when we are when we are back to normal hopefully soon um and uh, the touring and festivals are picking up again um do you have any upcoming gigs or <laughs> people that are interested in upcoming gigs in the us for you guys yeah i mean we've had a lot of interest i think obviously things are kind of halted right now um 
but yeah, we've had a lot of interest uh, at this point, which is great. It's really encouraging, right? Um, especially since we've kind of changed up the the lineup in the band, we've kind of changed up our sound and that that people are still are still interested. Um, so I think in the future, I think more so than kind of where we've been with Dead Astronauts, I think in the future we're a little more set up to to uh, to actually perform live, to actually tour, to kind of do all those things, especially with with Florence and I being both on the west coast of the U.S. Just traveling, that's obviously a lot easier, a lot more approachable. Um, so yeah, I know it's definitely in the future, definitely a plan. We just kind of have to figure out the logistics and what that actually looks like. But uh, what do you think, Florence? What, what do you think about us performing live? Well, I mean, it's it's definitely exciting. I think that li performing live is one of my favorite things to do in the whole, in all of, you know, doing music. So um, yeah, no, just getting, getting any chance to perform live is really exciting. And yeah, like Jared said, we've had, um, we've had some, a lot of people interested in having dead astronauts perform live eventually. Um, maybe even some live streams in the future, who knows? Um, but yeah, no, it's it's all it's just the logistics um and how we would practice remotely and all of that stuff and you know just setting up a live a live set, especially with electronic music, it's a little it can get a little tricky. You have to make it so it's not too boring. <laughs> um <laughs> <laughs> uh, but luckily, I mean, both of us sing, and um, when when they're when they're singers on the stage, there's always something a little bit more engaging than just straight up electronic music. So mm -hmm. I think we'll be fine. We'll figure it out. Um, and yeah, it's definitely something that I'm really really excited to to do in the future. Yeah, that, that's great. I'm looking forward to that. Hopefully. <laughs> I have, we have the chance to see it someday live. So now, we, no, 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 we, we, as promised, we will now um, play you another song, uh, which is Thorns. Uh, a wonderful song um, with a wonderful voice of Florence. And um, yeah, I think this is the, the last song we play you today from the album. Maybe a little later in the, in the end, another one. Um, and... Uh, Let's first hear the song and then, uh, yeah, finish this session.
really awesome. Are you both writing uh, um, writing lyrics or wrote the lyrics for the album, or is there a special part? So it's only one one write the, writing the lyrics, or uh, only the other, or are you both right? Um, yeah, yeah, we clap. Oh, go ahead. Yeah, well, um, I was gonna say Jared writes, writes most of the lyrics. I wrote the the lyrics to the song "Thorn" um, on the album, but uh, but I I I always kind of strugg struggled with lyrics, so I I feel more comfortable <laughs> with Jared taking the reins on that. I'm I'm better at coming up with melodies and harmonies and um, um, stuff like that. So, but yeah, Jared, Jared gets most of the credit with the with the lyrics. <laughs> But, uh, How are, uh, what are your lyrics? What are your lyrics about? Are there personal personal lyrics, or are they uh, do they reflect your experience? Or uh, tell us a bit wh how what what are you writing about? Um, I mean that's a loaded <laughs> question. Obviously, um, I, the big thing is is that I've always tried to write in in, in metaphors um, to some extent, right? Where it's it's kind of what what I'm singing isn't isn't literal right it can be taken a few different ways um but yeah it, it's we the music especially in the past has been a little more upbeat but even with with Haley we kind of the the tones behind things are, are quite a bit darker and I think especially with silhouettes um there's a lot of darker meanings be, behind stuff I mean a lot of it uh I write about um uh, my struggles with with depression uh my brother's death uh the the sort of racial tension in the u.s right now as well um with one of our songs that's on the album called these hands uh mm -hmm. is specifically about that um so again a little more serious a little darker than, than where we've been in the past but i try to cover a lot of those things and it's you know with the the sort of uh this sort of mentality of of not talking about your feelings and things like that the the music is sort of one of those outlets right where you can kind of you can kind of get those thoughts out there you can kind of get those feelings out there without kind of doing it right which is it's it sounds kind of silly but it's 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 always been the way that i've i've loved to express myself whether it's been singing along to other people's music or 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 creating my own um that it's always been a great outlet and even with my art um my art itself the graphic design has always been a little more colorful a little more a little more vibrant but the actual messaging and even the words and the terminology and the imagery is actually incredibly dark um so i've always liked that sort of juxtaposition and i think dead astronauts has that good balance where the lyrics and all that are dark but then you get florence's vocals in which are obviously a lot lighter right they bring that lighter tone they bring that lightness to it that sort mm -hmm. of that yeah. balance and that's the sort of, sort of thing that i was striving for i think everything in life needs that balance right and i think that's where that that great element of where florence comes in is she brings that balance right if it was just slade and i just just br brooding away in our feelings and that it would just it would be this sort of heavy sort of production this heavy sort of album but i think with florence in there she really interjects that sort of more lightness to it which is i think a great balance um so for me that kind of balances out as you sort of have these catchy songs they're kind of on the verge of pop at times and that a little more catchy that kind of balances out the sort of darker lyrics and the darker meanings behind things that's to me that's 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 the bread my bread and butter right there <laughs> Mm -hmm. um yeah and it's it's funny because i'm i sort i write lyrics totally differently <laughs> um because i <laughs> usually i i do more of like a stream of consciousness mm -hmm. type thing and when i i can't necessarily write lyrics without music so like i like for my solo stuff like i produce everything first and then i write the lyrics so um, mm -hmm. So it's good that you know we have Jared and Slade on board, so that you know they they come up with these amazing production ideas. Um, but for me, what I what I do is I just kind of sing gibberish over um, whatever music we have, and then from there I sort of kind of choose a general theme. It's always for me, it's always a darker theme as well. So um, so we all we all have that in common. We all end up writing kind of really dark lyrics. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but uh yeah for me it just it kind of just kind of evolves from whatever i whatever gibberish i come up with and and usually it it, it does end up meaning something and it is of course you know that darker theme but you can kind of interpret my lyrics more kind of however you want to so there's um yeah it's more open-ended on my side i guess awesome wow <laughs> yeah great so yeah, 
I would say we're pretty much looking forward to the album release. Yeah. Um, and um, people and your fans uh, can also uh, look forward to. And the album release, as you know, guys, is tomorrow <laughs> on the 15th. And uh, yeah, I would say. Thank you for the interview. Any famous last words of you guys for this interview? What's your catchphrase, Florence? <laughs> um no i mean thank you thank you so much for for having us and this has been really fun and we're really really excited for everyone to hear the album it's um it's been in the works for a while so we're finally we're finally putting it out in the world so we're excited it's gonna be great <laughs> yeah and we're we're happy to be part of the of the cold transmission family obviously uh we're happy to be working with you guys uh, of course um, and yeah, we're super excited for the album release and then anything that, that comes out of that music video wise and everything else, we're, we're super excited for it all. So yeah, thanks. Thanks to you guys, Cold Transmission family and to all the fans. Yeah, thanks to you guys. Uh, and thanks for this uh, first Cold Transmission interview session. <laughs> yeah. And uh, we enjoyed it a lot. And yeah, we're pretty much looking forward to release your album. And I'm sure it will go great. I give a heart. <laughs> All right, guys. Um, yeah. Thanks a lot. And now we play you one last song. Uh, we play you now as uh, the last song, Willem Scream, which is an instrumental song by Jared. And with this, we close the session. And go check out on check the album out on Bandcamp. Silhouettes coming out tomorrow vinyl, CD, digital, Spotify, whatever streaming platforms of this world you ever want to hear. And uh, yeah, see you soon. Have fun and good night. Good night. <laughs> <laughs>